don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So it's the first Saturday of a brand new month, which means that it's time for a brand new art challenge over on our Mission Inspiration Facebook group. So once again, there's a brand new prompt card with colour combination, words for inspiration, and the theme is Under the Sea. So I've already printed out, I'm ready to go. So let's switch over to the overhead camera and I'll show you what I'm gonna create in my Mission Inspiration journal. Okay, so I've got my circle journal open at the next page, ready to do my piece of artwork, <laughs> or attempt to. Um, I've printed off the card, obviously, as you showed, I showed you earlier. Um, my colours have come out a bit weird because I'm running out of a certain colour. I'm running out of magenta, so it's not cat, not magenta. Yes, magenta. So the colours aren't quite what it, they should be on this print, but you get the general idea anyway. So we've got coral, ocean and sand. So what I've done is I've gone into my American Deco Art collection of paints here, and I've pulled out... Um, for the coral, I just happen to have one that's actually called coral. And um, there was another call, one of the colour which was lighter than this, and it was called coral shell. But I kind of like this um, pinky kind of orangey colour, so I'm going to stick with that one. For the ocean, um, I could have gone to the Dina Wakeley ocean colour but I wanted a different kind of colour for that. So I've pulled out two of the of these blues here. I've got true blue and Indian turquoise. So what I'm probably going to end up doing is maybe mixing these two blues together. Because we're talking about under the sea, I don't really think anybody needs to get hung up on not having the right applicable or approximate shade. Just make one up. Nobody's going to know, and to be honest, nobody's really going to care. <laughs> as long as you don't go too dark, that you, well, unless unless you really want to go dark, you know that's up to you. Really, is up to you. Um, and for the sand, again, I don't have a sand colour. So what I've done is I've pulled out light buttermilk, which is an off-white kind of creamy colour, and I've got true ochre. So to make sand, I'm probably going to mix one with the other to get a lighter shade of the true ochre. Is it a lighter shade or a lighter tone? It's a lighter tone, isn't it? It's a shade if it's got black in it. Yes, that's right. So a lighter tone as opposed to a lighter shade, which is an oxymoron. And of course, I've got some white, just in case. So those are the colors that I've got for my art journal page. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a stenciling as well. I've obviously got focal points. Um, so to start off with, I'm going to put down a coat of, um, of blue, just to kind of get it going. So I'm going to put a lighter blue towards the top, and then I'm going to go darker blue towards the bottom, but I will mix in some white, just to get a variation in some shade or tone. Um, I think I've got some water in there. I may have to nip off and get some more, or I could just steal some from another bottle that I've got lying around. There we go. That should keep me going for a bit. I used to have a bigger spray bottle with water in that I could just go to if I needed to. I think all those paintbrushes are actually dead. That one's all right. He says, looking into his pot. I've got a pot of water here to show you what I'm doing. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go replenish all this, clean it out, put some clean water in, and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I've replenished, cleaned, <laughs> and got some clean brushes as well. So, um, I meant to mention as well, if you can hear some clicking in the background, it's because Ian's in the room with me and he's working on his computer. Um, say hello. Hello. There you go. Um, but he's going to be quiet on pain of, yeah. well, pain basically. Um, so there you go. Right, so I've got those there. I'm dithering a bit today, I know. Right, let's put that card out the way. So I said we we're going to start off with blue, didn't I? So let's give it a shake. I 
and just put some, I've not put any gesso down on the page so this is going to soak straight in. Um, and the only reason why I've not put any gesso down on the page is because I'm going to mix just a little bit of water with it so we will get a little bit of fluidity with the paint. So I'll just go all the way around. I'm not bothered about going right up to the edge. Don't mind leaving a little bit of a white bordery thing. So we've got that, and I get some of that darker blue. Give it a shake, shake it to wake it. Add a few blobs of that. And then we can mix a bit of the colour in the background. So we've just got cross, make it a bit grungified. A nice kind of mix all the way down. Don't mind if it, you actually get like brush strokes and stuff in it. Don't mind it looking a bit painterly, if that is such a word. It must be a word, otherwise I wouldn't be able to say it. And then just bring some of that lighter tone down here in the bottom, like so. And I think as a first base, that will do. So we'll get that dried off and then I will be back. That blue is pretty much dry. Ta-da. Maybe a little bit there. Is that? That's also dry. Uh, just a bit there on the edge there, but that's okay. Right, so I want to mix up some of that ochre like that and some of the buttermilk just to create that kind of sandy colour. I'm not going to add in a huge amount. So I'm going to just play it by ear and I've got a piece of natural sponge here. So let's just mix those together, dab it, load the sponge up a bit so we've got a nice kind of sandy colour and then down towards the bottom of the page I'm just going to start dabbing And building up a little bit of that colour towards the bottom. We can take that as far out and across. Get it into the middle. And I don't mind if I get some of this on the pages preceding or afterwards preceding. That means going before, doesn't it? Or does it come, mean coming after? Oh, I can't remember. I told you, I'm having difficulty with the worms today. I think it's because I haven't had very many coffees today. In fact, I might just include <laughs> that as my phrase for the page today. Okay, so I've got a nice kind of sandy build up there. So I'm going to add a little bit of lighter colour just down at the bottom. So again, just work that into the sponge and then just add a little bit just over the top to give it a little bit of light relief, as the saying goes. And then let's get it dried. That sandy colour is now dry. You can, I'm hoping the camera's picked up the darkness and then the lighter kind of mottling going over the top. So the next bit that I want to do, he says, going into another one of his drawers in front of him, is to add a bit more stenciling. So the next stencil that I'm going to use is this one. So a while ago, um, oh, I purchased this God, what year is it now? 2020. So this must be around about 2006, 2007 um, from a chappy uh, or a company here in the UK called Ross Papercrafts. Uh, and the chap that ran that company called Terry was, was quite a good, <laughs> he was a fun chap. Um, uh, but I don't know whether he's still going. 
Uh, I don't know whether the company's still going because we've not been in that kind of craft fair kind of market for quite some years. So I don't know whether Terry's still operational or whether this stencil is still available. Um, it's a crackle stencil, so it looks like crackle. But to me, it also looks like the cracks you get on a tree trunk. You know, you kind of get that one in the center and you kind of get cracks going out in the rings. I've used this one for lightning in the past. Obviously it can be used for cracks as well. But today I'm going to use this one to create some kind of coral effect. So a really good stencil, very versatile and can be used for lots of different things. So like I said, I used it, I think it was Halloween last year and my seven days of Halloween. Um, or something like that. I used it for lightning um, or it might have been one of those days when I was having a migraine, a really bad headache um, to symbolise the, the pain. can't remember off the top of my head. It was teamed up with the Frankenstein, it's Frankenstein's monster image. Right, so let's get some of that coral colour kind of built up with that stencil. I'm going to have this kind of like in the background. I'm not going to get it going everywhere. I just want a little bit kind of branching out from the middle. So sometimes you, you see a stencil and you think, oh, that reminds me of. Um, some people get it, some people don't. And sometimes shapes can be used for other shapes. Like this one, it's supposed to be crackle, but it makes a really good lightning, but can also be used like I said, for kind of like coral outcrops, like I'm just trying to create with this paint here. So, as with most acrylic paints, um, depending on obviously the make and their fluidity, normally if you let it dry, you can go back and add another coat over the top to darken it. Um, so, if you're using a colour that's not necessarily 100% opaque, it's a translucent kind of colour, like a yellowy colour. You know, it's useful just to be able to go over and do a couple of coats. So let's lift that up and see what we've got. Yeah. See? That's what it looks like to me. So let's get some more of that colour just there. And towards and then up into that water up there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'll put that stencil to one side, ready for drying. Of course, need to get this dried off. Now that that coral colour is dry, I want to add something just towards the top in that background. So I'm going to fall back on Old Faithful. We're going to be adding some splatters. The answer to all problems. Add splatters. So I'm just going to do some of them in the background. In this case, if you're doing stuff which looks like it's underwater, adding splatters like this also could double up as bubbles. So there, uh, it's a double whammy. So splatters can be stars, they can be lights in a skyline or on a horizon, they can be anything you want. They can be dust motes, they can be fairy glitter. And that's why they work so well, because they can literally turn the hand at anything. Those splatters are nice and dry now. So I think we're ready to move on to adding the main focal image. But I did pull out of my collection my Roundel stencil because I could have done some bubbles if I'd wanted to, going up, just flip it over and then go up the other side that way. Um, just because you have doesn't mean to say you need, you, you know, you have to use it. There are lots of other, or you've got in your stash probably, lots of other stencils that can be used for other things. So that Roundel's one, yeah, could have been done for bubbles, but I think they would have been a little bit too big, maybe, in the background. Don't know, maybe, maybe not. But the other thing that I could have done, as I've got this 
um, Tim Holtz collection Ray's stencil. See I could have done kind of sunlight coming through the water from the top or used that as kind of like a coral effect down at the bottom and then just extended it out if you'd have wanted to. So there are other ways in which to use your stencils other than the ones that they were actually meant. So but that sun rays one would have looked nice like I said as though you've got sun coming through the water you could get that kind of ripply effect don't you. <clears throat> if I hadn't have put the, the splatters on I could have done that with a lighter shade of blue but hey ho. Right so under the sea, main focal point. I've already printed and cut this one out um, because it is a bit complicated. So this is the image that I'm going to be using for my art journal page. So I've actually stolen this off Ian. It's one of Ian's images um, that he uses um, for whatever job. I can't remember what job this is for, t-shirts or for something. Um, so he's lent it for me for my art journal page. So all I'm going to do is I've cut it out but I haven't actually got round to adding the colour to get rid of those white edges. So I will do that, go all the way around, getting rid of those white edges and then I'll be back. Right, I think I've got all of those white edges. So it just looks a little bit tidier and of course when you have dexterity problems or your hands shake a little bit or you're getting on a little bit because we're not as young as we used to be. How dare you! <laughs> um, when we're cutting out we don't necessarily get right to the edge so it just helps to hide those little imperfections um, and it doesn't take it very long to, um, to go through and just get rid of them. So I'm just going to choose a centre point here and because obviously I'm going to have to fold my octopus with his little diving helmet down the middle um, so that I can fold the page like so. So that's where he's going to get folded. It helps me centre him on the page as well. So that's where I'm going to stick that down. So get my glue sticks. Let's have a look. Hopefully there's still life in this one. Yeah. So I'll just add some glue just very gently on the edges of the tentacles. Just careful how I say that. Okay, and then whip round. Work your way outwards. Makes it a bit easier. I think I've got everyone. I'll just get rid of that mat now because it's got glue all over it. So let's stick that down into that crease. Is that right? That'll do. And then we'll just go around sticking that down. Making sure we have tucked it right into that corner. Hey, <laughs> like it. So while I was doing that, I also just nipped onto my computer and redid the quote and the phrase that I wanted to add for this page. Um, it was just going to be kind of like an undersea kind of message, but seeing as we've been talking about not being able to do anything until we've had our first coffee. That is what I've incorporated into my quote. So here we go. Um, now then, do I need just to add a little bit of grunge to this? I think maybe just maybe tad vintage photo. Have I got a yes? Here we go. So I'm just going to quickly add a little bit of grunge around there. My only concession with this one is that I've done blue writing rather than black just to kind of get it to blend in a little. Coordinate. I think the blue probably works better on the background. 
There we go. Not a complicated page this time, or this week, month, whatever it is. Where's that stick? There we go. Just enough glue left. All right, so, we have to rub that along the back. And we can put that there. And that can go there at a bit of a jaunty angle. And then the last one, the last remnants of glue on that stick should see to that. There we go. <laughs> Some days I'm a wreck and chasing my tail until I've had a coffee. <laughs> like it. So, when we bring back the card for the mission inspiration, we've got under the sea, so that's the theme. Coral, ocean, and sand. Well, coral, ocean, and sand. And the words for inspiration, so we're wreck, reef, tails, dive, and treasure. So I've incorporated the word wreck and tail into my quote for the page. So I think for July, I think I've achieved it. So all I need to do now is just find a pen that will work. That one works. And then I can sign it and date it. Fourth of, oh, it's July, not June. <sighs> 2020, look at that. Fancy still thinking it was June. But never mind. So later on, I may go back in and add some glossy accents for bubbles around, but I won't have time to get that dry and get this video edited in time for tonight. So I probably will just leave that as it is. But I like that. But um, in previous videos, I collected all these cards and I hadn't stuck them into the book. I have now added all of the cards to the backs of the months for those pages. So as you can see, each one has the card attached to the front, which is perfect. So that one was Flights of Fantasy. That was what it was gonna be originally, but we changed to Flights of Fantasy Yep, remember that one. And then last month's was Grungy Top. And this is this month. So what I will do is I will just fold this over so that sits there and then that can be glued if there's anything left. No, that's gone now so I'll have to get another glue stick out. There we go. And that then can get glued to the back. So that's for July 2020. And I'd say mission accomplished. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create that page. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends. And don't forget, if you want to join in with us on our Facebook group with all the monthly challenges, there's also, apart from the main monthly challenge at the big, the first Saturday of each month, there's also the mid-month mini, two weeks after that. Um, and there is also um, some quarantine quickies that I've been putting up uh, over the last few months. Uh, I think we're up to, I think, number 90 so far. Um, I'll be going up to 100 and then I will be knocking those on the head. So there'll be 100 um, quarantine quickies if you're still in lockdown, if you're still at home um, and want some inspiration on a daily basis you could use those too. Um, but there's all the mission inspiration prompt cards from the months going right the way back to 2017 or 2016, something like that on the Facebook group. So there's a lot to go at if you're just starting, just want to join us. There's plenty to catch up on and keep you busy and keep you inspired. So I hope you've enjoyed that. 
I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.